an exam coming up and there is a lot of material that you have to study. It's absolutely crucial that you learn all this information to do well on this test. But wait, learning alone is not good enough if you cannot remember what you've learned after learning it. What is the one cognitive faculty that will allow you achieving this? Yes, you guessed it right. It's memory. Hello and welcome guys to the first video in the memory series, Studying Memory from a Cognitive Psychology Perspective, wherein we will release 17 videos on the topic of memory from October through to December. With that said, let's proceed. So an average person comes across roughly about 74 GBs worth of information each day. Now, while it is humanly impossible to pay attention to every detail with this magnitude of information, thanks to the cognitive faculty of memory that allows us to remember the important and relevant aspects out of this enormous body of information that is being thrown at us. Now, the study of memory existed over thousands of years and many renowned Greek scholars and philosophers such as Aristotle and Plato contributed to the initial ideas about the faculty of memory. However, the person who undertook for the first time a systematic empirical study of memory as we know about it today in the field of cognitive psychology or cognition in general was done by the great German scholar named Hermann Ebbinghaus. Despite being the pioneer in his empirical approaches to studying memory, his work rightly matched the standards of science that is used in studying memory today and his studies in the field of memory and forgetting are cited to the present day. All of this work culminated to his great book called The Memory, A Contribution to Experimental Psychology, which was published and translated in English in 1913. Well, all that being said, a big question that looms over is, what is memory? Now, memory can be viewed as a process wherein we take in information of interest and then subject it to encoding, storing and retrieving it as and when we require it. Notice that we do three things with the information we take in in the process of memory. The first thing we do with this information is we encode it. The second thing we do is we store it. And the final thing we do is retrieve it. These three aspects constitute of the stages that allow for memory formation. Now, in the upcoming videos in this series, we will have specific videos dedicated to learning about each of these aspects in much greater detail. However, in today's video, let us get an overview of the concepts of encoding, storage and retrieval. Encoding is a process which essentially refers to a state wherein we actively engage in collecting the relevant pieces of information and mindfully encoding or inputting them to our conscious attention. This is very important of a stage in memory formation because without mindful, effortful and active encoding, you essentially don't have any input to begin with informing your memory. The second stage is that of storage. Now, this stage occurs right after encoding and in this stage we simply, as the name, store the encoded material. Now, the type of storage can differ, the capacity of storage can also differ and so on. We study about this in much more detail in the third video in this particular series. After the storage, the final aspect we do is Retrieval. Now, the purpose of memory is to be able to supply us with relevant information as and when we need it. And after the encoding and storage of the information has been done, therefore retrieval is the final aspect or the purpose your memory serves. Now, there are many factors that can impact retrieval as a process, as well as the accuracy of the retrieval can be impacted by different aspects. 
All of these aspects will be discussed in the upcoming fourth video in the series. But for now, we know that retrieval is a process of actively retrieving the units of information that you have encoded and stored in the initial two stages of memory formation. Alright, so let's tie together what we covered in today's short introductory video with an example of grocery shopping, an activity that is undertaken in everyday life. Now, by the end of this video, we know that memory is a process of encoding, storing and retrieving information as and when we need it. In a situation of grocery shopping, you will need to encode the information about what are the things that you need to buy. So you will draw a list in which you write the items such as vegetables or dairy products that you require to buy. You will then store this information in order to keep it in your memory and then when you go to the market you will retrieve this information from your encoded and stored memory in order to remember and recall what you need to buy. Alright, so that is the end of the first introductory video in the memory series. Thank you very much for watching and thank you for your attention. If you found value in today's video and you want to follow through the entire memory series and learn more about this as well as any upcoming videos in the field of cognitive sciences such as psychology and neuroscience and so on, then please make sure to subscribe to our channel Brain Cyclopedia. Also leave a like and send us a comment below and share this video with someone you think will benefit. It really encourages us to keep making and delivering content to our viewers. Viewers. Make sure to press the bell icon for staying updated about any upcoming videos as well. Also follow us on all of our social media sites on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. You can find the link of these sites in the description below as well as in the channel banner. Finally, you can find the full schedule of the memory video series in the description below and also pinned to the comment section as well as in the posts in our Instagram handle and Twitter handle as well. See you in our next video.